For the few of you that watched my channel from the beginning, you'll remember I used to start many of my videos right here in the car as I was out on my morning run to either get coffee or dog food. So I thought I'd return to it in addition to returning to some of the topics that I'd covered up until the last couple months, which is more of the advanced music theory and composition. Okay, let's get started. In today's episode, we're going to talk about using multiple compositional devices in one piece. Now, we've talked about these particular things that I'm going to demonstrate in this piece on individual videos, but I've never put them together in a video yet. So I have a short couple minute piece that I'm going to play for you right now, and then we're going to talk about it. Check it out. The piece begins with what I would call modal counterpoint, the first four bars. It's a contrapuntal theme, a call and response, but they're actually based on modes. The first two modes being C-sharp Aeolian in bars one and two, then moving to F-sharp Ionian, and then down to F Lydian. Now, why did I pick these particular modes? I did a video that talked about four different inversions of a major seven sus two and how if you take the common tone of all those notes and play the different inversions but with one common tone you will get the series of four chords the four chords in this instance it begins with this what i would call an e major with a sus four i call it e sus four three but it's e g sharp a b all right, so if you play that out in its different inversions, then I go to this inversion, then I go to that inversion, there's your major seven sus two. That resolves down to this. Okay, so this would be essentially a B major sus four three, but in inversion, which then resolves to this chord which is an F sharp major sus four three. So you've got C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, B, and then it resolves down to an F Lydian sus two. This is actually a departure. I did this. It, it, if I had followed the pattern, it would have been this chord, which would be uh, a C major seven sus two. So really bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, okay? That, that would be a downward modulation, okay? From F sharp Ionian to F Lydian. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like, slow down, but with the counterpoint looking at the music. You'll notice that bars five through eight use the same four chord progression, but the counterpoint gets a little bit more involved. Let's hear it up to tempo. The 
The transition from bar 11 to 12 moves from F Lydian in bar 11. And then you go to a 6-4 bar, which is B flat Lydian augmented, which would be this sound. And then we move to E mixed Lydian flat 6 in bar 15. Let's check it out. In bar 22, we return to the original theme, except this time it's done in almost a triple meter. It has a lilting field. It's based on triplets. Let's listen to it. The section ends with a sound. It's coming out of F Lydian, right? So you hear this. And then you hear a, a down to a B bass note with this sound over it, which would be C sus2 over B or a B locrian. Now B locrian and F Lydian are related because they're both part of C major. But you have that sound and then D flat major over that, which is really more of a polytonal sound. And then it goes up into this A flat Lydian major. So it's A flat major with a sharp four, right? And then you hear this D flat on the top. Well, what happens here is you've got at the very end, which would be an X cell, which, would, which is four chromatic notes in a row. You get C, D flat, which is octave displaced, D, E flat. I like to use transitions like that. These increasing levels of dissonance as they just start suspending up in the air and then boom. There's one more final surge that is actually a bitonal section. So it's triads over bass notes. There's a particular pattern, even though there are a bunch of odd note groupings, but there's a pattern of triads where it goes from D flat major to E flat major to E major to F sharp major to G to A to B. The bass line is moving in contrary motion with it. Let's check it out. That section finishes out with a very fast flourish of 32nd notes that is actually a 12-tone row played in its prime form and then in its retrograde form. And then into the final chords that are atonal in nature, but once again set the mood for the ending. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, which has all these concepts in it, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com and you can find it there. Thanks for watching.